our um, lecture and puppet show from our beloved uh, guest speaker from Fukuoka, Ms. Reiko Nishige and her members from Harapan Association. Give a round of applause. So facing the Olympics games, we are making the kimonos, and it's designed like uh, with Indonesian style. So we are starting to Indonesia to Japan no Junka Kori will come to go to my mass. And that's that's the start of our uh, mission and our objective to make a closer relation between Japan and Indonesia. え、それでそのメンバーを紹介します。で、会長がネシゲと言います。ビジネスで。はい、はい、わかりました。はい。え、ソマシヤ、ナマサヤ、デイコ。はい。ルタボ。ルタボ。コスチューム、T-shirt。
You have a wonderful culture like Waya, it's a performance too. Storytelling is uh, speakers re read aloud and showing picture books to the listener. Storytelling started at elementary school in 1895, and uh, uh, performer and the activities become popular years and years. And in 2000, oh, 2000, the book book start Japan campaign uh, started. It's uh, introduced from United Kingdom mm, originally. Uh, and they become a socialized storytelling become socialized throughout the Japan after the 2000. I uh, educational effect. What is storytelling is good point from the educational views. Uh, let the children learn and acquire rich language and knowledge. You know, 80% of your vocabulary comes from? Education. Education. Oh, yes, education. But books. 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 Yeah. But, uh, and, uh, uh, so, 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 yes. And by the picture story, uh, uh, so storytelling is uh, cultivated. Uh, no, no, no. Sorry, sorry. Uh, yes, cultivate the rich mind and emotion. Only language, words, and uh, knowledge is not enough to your human life. So storytelling uh, is war, very work. Uh, you cultivate a rich mind and emotion. Okay. And then, and you can share the same word with others, with the kids. So about the topics, sharing ideas. Mm -hmm. So that is a good point from the educational view. And height also. And the next, from kids' side. So kids must be satisfied with something good, you know? So, one is attachment. Attachment is very important for children to grow well. So, for example, parents hold their kids, baby, by hands, or let them put on your lap, or you sit side by side, attached together, so it's a skinship. Physical contact is very important. So kids feel happy, protected, and beloved. Okay. And the next, in the communication. Not only verbal communication, but also non-verbal communication, like facial expression or body expression, <laughs> kids easily surprised, <laughs> overjoyed like this, it's important from the picture book. And simulated and follow-up experience. Uh, there is imagination of experience, there is a limitation of experience in your life. So, Kids can play in the story with the imagination. That is 
good point from kids' uh, side. Okay, the next. So, let me introduce some cases of performance or activities about storytelling. Storytelling at home, storytelling kindergarten or schools, local communities, library, or a hospital or a care center or a nursing home for the elderly people. Okay, I'll uh, show you uh, some pictures. At home, the family time, father read aloud the picture book to the kids. And before sleeping, uh, baby enjoy the story and feel loved before sleeping. And then communication and skinship is uh, satisfied. At school, I told you two uh, years of 2000, social activity of storytelling became popular. And at the same time, 10 minutes of morning reading movement started. Mm. Uh, so the volunteer people comes to the school and get into the classroom before lessons. Ichijikan me no mai. And uh, I read uh, one book for 10 minutes, about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So uh, kids be very relaxed, sometimes relaxed. And also they may ready to concentrate to the study okay, after the storytelling. It works. Hi, Dozo. At the daycare center, so one day, one of day program of elderly. Hi, Dozo. At the library, this is Kurume Citizen Library. So collection is 75,000 books uh, in the kids' room. Okay, that kids' room. And uh, uh, the event is held on weekend, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday. The volunteer comes and read a book for the kids in that room. A new book introduction and the last the reception. Reception as it always keeps smiling and welcome to the kids. At the community, there are many event, annual events are uh, held in the community center too. So picture story show at Christmas meeting, storytelling by citizen volunteer. And from babies to elderly people are okay. Welcome. Hi. So you are an Indonesian student? Yes? So you know what kind of picture books? Can you tell the name? You have experience? You have listened to this. Somebody? I remember this book from my childhood name is Kanchil. Oh, Kanchil? Yeah. Oh, okay, that Kanchil. Okay. Other? Another person? No? Right? Okay, I will show you. I have two, I know two stuff books. I found them in the library. So the left one is Smantori to Skoro no Fu, the Union, Nihongo Deskido, Skoro, Skosuru, Skosuro no Ka. Kurevano, Wayano, ne? Hindu no story, this Nano Lama Yanaka, Lama, ne? So, the Migiga, Anataga Yuta, Kanchu, ne? Kanchu, very popular, the so this people. So then I can read aloud to the Japanese kids. After translation, I know I don't know, but uh, yes, I would like to. Do. So the next. 
We will visit Indonesia this September. And uh, I will find a typical Indonesian story books there and buy there, buy some there. But at the same time, we will uh, uh, give a presentation and performance of Kamishi by picture story show. I will show you later. And uh, the event will be held six venues in Jakarta and Bandung. Uh, universities, kindergartens, Japanese language school, and maybe some companies. So, to introduce Japanese way of storytelling picture book, fun play kids for the elderly people, and exercise like this, <laughs> dance. So, we are very happy to introduce Japanese culture and the storytelling there. So, in late September, where are you? Indonesia, Jakarta? Bandu, okay, we could meet you there. <laughs> so, last one. Uh, for the event, we are producing Kamishibai now. So, uh, we, we write, we wrote a story in Japanese languages and pass the paper to the Indonesian people in Fukuoka and they are translating <laughs> to Indonesian languages so that we can read Indonesian languages in, the, in Jakarta and Bandung. And the, the picture, please. Uh, two kamishibai we are making. One is Isumboshi, Leroichi. Now we will introduce, okay? And the uh, second one is Warashibe Choja. Strong millionaire. You know? Have you ever read? No. <laughs> Hi. Then the, the picture, uh, they are the student of Kurume University. Hmm. Uh, educate, they have an educational course and they study and to become a teacher or kindergarten teacher. And uh, they are drawing every day after between classes, after group studies, and they help us. We are very looking, uh, looking forward to, to be completed. So I will record all the process uh, on the video. So maybe next time, please look at our video, all right? Uh, thank you for listening to my Presentation. <laughs> but I will continue the storytelling here. So the screen is changed a little inch. And then this is Kamishibai box like this. Little inch. Not so very long ago, in the village of Naniwa, in the province of Setsu, there lived a married couple who were always past 40 and still had no children. The couple were very sad at their childless condition, 
we went to worship the great god of Sumiyoshi and prayed fervently. Please, please send us a child. And perhaps because the great god sympathized with their gentle souls, the following year, the old woman became pregnant just as they had hoped. Of course, her husband was overjoyed. Eventually, her time came and she wore a jewel of a baby boy. But for some reason, the child was only one inch tall, only the size of your, your finger, your little finger. And so the couple called their child Little Age and took care of him. The years went by quickly, and soon Little Age was 12 years old. But it did not like not look like he would ever grow. His parents sighed each time they saw their son. This is no ordinary child. He must be some kind of monstrosity. Why? Oh why did the great God send us such a child? Oh what a sad fate. If only Little Inch would go away somewhere. Little Inch heard their whispers. If my own parents dislike me, I'll have to leave here. Any place would be better. And yet first, he needed a sword if he was to set out his travel alone. So he begged the needle to use a sword and fashioned the hilt and seed from barley straw. So now he looked quite gallant and decided to leave for the capital. Next he got a rice bowl and chopsticks for a boat. boarded his rice ball ship from Sumiyoshi's shore, rowing on the chopsticks oar with all his might, and moving along the river toward the capital to the tune of Enyakora, Enyakora. So in time, he reached the port of Toba. Little Inch entered the capital city. Whichever way he looked, everything startled his eyes. Most of all, the streets of Fourth and Fifth Avenues were more marvelous than any words could ever describe. However, Little Inch's resolve on entering the city was firm. He strolled straight up to the mansion of the Prime Minister of Third Avenue. Hello there, sirs. Say, now that's a voice I've never heard before. The Prime Minister's curiosity was around, and he wondered who it was. So he stepped out onto the veranda, but there was no faint sight of person the voice came from. Was it my imagination? Little Inch hid under a wooden sandal there, and called out again, Hello there, sirs! Oh, 
strange. Again, I hear a voice where there is no sign of anywhere. The Prime Minister stepped down onto the wooden sandal, the better to see outside. Whoops! Please, sir, don't step on me. You'll crush me. Little Inch said, jumping out from under the sandal. The Prime Minister now saw where the voice came from and his eyes went wide with surprise. Well, what an unusual little person. I'm not just unusual. I'll surely be useful to you. I like you. Good. You're hired. Time passed and the little inch who had been living in the Prime Minister's mansion was already 16. Lamentably, he showed no sign of growing any taller. He was still the same little inch, but he had a secret wish hidden away in his heart. He had fallen in love with the princess, prime minister's daughter. She was just 13 and very beautiful and little inch was captivated by her. A thief. He immediately began stuffing rice into a paper bag and cooked the rice. And when the princess was sleeping soundly, he went up to her and smeared grains of cooked rice all around her mouth. Then, holding the empty bag, he kept on crying bitterly. Luckily for him, the Prime Minister happened by. What's this, little inch? Why are you crying? Sir, it's very difficult for me to tell you this. But Princess ate up all my rice. I had it in this paper bag. Prime Minister looked at the sweet little princess. To his surprise, the princess's mouth was covered with sticky grains of rice. The prime minister flew into a rage and shouted, How dare you? How dare you steal like this? You are not good. Get out of here fast. Then he turned to little inch. The princess stole real rice. You may do with her as you like. Take her away, quickly. Little Inch thought, good, I've done it. But when he turned to the princess, he hid his feelings. Come now, little Miss Thief, I will accompany you. The princess, not even able to grasp what had happened to her, just stood there, feeling that nothing was real, and depressed of by little inch, who urged her to hurry to leave the city. As for the princess, she, realized her, she realized her cruel fate, so different from just yesterday. She lamented her ill luck, but there was no help for it. In that case, please say for your hometown, the village of Naniwa. The two boarded the boat from Port of Toba. However, soon after they set out, a fierce wind came up and the boat was unexpectedly washed ashore on a strange island. 
It was an island without a trace of human life. She had no idea which way to turn. Then which, on the other hand, began to explore on the island. When he was prowling about behind some large rocks, two ogres appeared out of nowhere and suddenly blocked his way. What's this? I thought I smelled a man, but it's just a little runt. He won't fill my stomach. The owner who held the mallet that hammers out good fortune clicked his tongue in disgust. I swallow him down in one bite and take that pretty princess. The other owner quickly swallowed little inch down. Ouch! Through the sound of the ogre's shriek, Little Inch leapt out of the ogre's eye. Oh, damn! What's nerve? Okay, I'll eat you again, and this time I crush your little head. The ogre picked Little Inch up with his thumb and two fingers and swallowed him whole again. And again, Little Inch leapt out of the ogre's eye in no time. Oh, what's a scandal? Okay, I am a horrid ogre. On my honor, I crush him between my teeth. Little Inch was all serene. No matter how many times he was swallowed, he leapt out in no time. Oh, hell! This is no ordinary creature. Quick, run! No sooner said the ogres dropped everything, the mallet, their staves, their whips, and they then beat a retreat into the northwestern mist of the paradise of the pure land. Little Inch burst into a laughter as if well pleased with himself. First, he picked up the mallet that had hammered out good fortune and raised it on high. Let me grow tall! Let me grow tall! Shouting this out, he struck downward sharply with it. And strangely enough, Little Witch grew rapidly. The princess was too surprised to say anything but, Oh dear, oh dear me! In place of Little Witch, there suddenly stood before her eyes a handsome young man. Are you really Little Witch? The young man smiled and nodded his head. What a curious mullet and how fortunate that he had gotten hold of it. Now, what do we need next? Of course, gold and silver treasure. Little Inch hammered out more than enough gold and silver and went back to the capital city with the princess. The news soon spread throughout the city and eventually reached the ears of the emperor. What a fantastic sounding tale! What kind of man is this to cause such a star in the city? By all means, order him to appear at court. At the emperor's command, Little Inch appeared at court right away. When the now elegant young man of fine presence 
appeared before him, the emperor was thoroughly impressed. Well, well, what a handsome young page. You must be of noble lineage. The emperor inquired honestly as to Little Inch's upbringing and ancestry and so on. Little Inch's parents, they now lived in the rustic village, but they were indeed of noble birth. The father, in fact, the son of the middle counselor of Horikawa, and his mother also was born into a noble family who held the title of Captain of Fushimi. I knew it. The emperor immediately appointed Little Inch to the rank of captain. The captain took up the residence in the mansion at Horikawa in the capital city, and at once sent to the village of Naniwa for his parents, and proceeded to take the most good care of them. His parents, who were by now very old, were choked with tears of happiness. Before long, the captain was promoted to middle counselor. The prince's father, the prime minister, was also exceptionally well pleased. Above all, the princess and the middle counselor were happy together, and they were blessed with three noble boys, so that the family prospered even more. It must be said that this auspicious tale happened entirely due to the divine protection of the great god of Sumiyoshi. about your storytelling and I'm, I'm like inspired and amazed at how you incorporate like how you read and at the same time have like a soundtrack to it and it's easier to have like a slideshow instead of the traditional book holding pose so I really enjoyed the whole entirety of the performance. Thank you. Thank you. One more Please give another round of applause for our lecture. <laughs> so our next event will be a um, poem contest and it will start in um, 10 minutes. So in 1.45 we will start our poem contest. So now please have a look at all the installations that we have prepared for you guys. And we'll see you back in 10 minutes. Thank you guys.